All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have some amazing new updates from Notion. However, I do need to acknowledge the fact that there is a not so great update right off the bat. They just announced this a little while ago, but essentially there are new changes coming to the Plus plan. It's a great product. It's a great upgraded setup from the free option that they have, but the price went from $10 a month to 12. And for me, I remember when the pro plan was actually there and I still have the same pricing. They're really nice that they are giving us that price for people who have been with the product since the pro plan was a thing. And we kind of got adopted into the plus features for a lesser cost. But I remember when it was $4 per month. Now it's 12. That's not cheap. And I think they are in an interesting position because of inflation. But then again, the consumers in that same kind of not great position because of inflation. So not going to share like my opinions and all that kind of stuff. But I will just state it is, in fact, increasing in price by two dollars. So I'm sorry to hear that for everybody who is new. It's going to be twelve dollars per month for existing customers. They appreciate the support. They're providing a three month window before the updating to the price applies. So. You can keep the current annual pricing for another year by renewing or switching to the annual plan by September 30th. So I wanted to call that out for you guys. But there are some really cool updates in the product that I wanted to dive into. Uh, first of all, being the table of contents that was added recently. So you'll notice here, there's a bunch of headers on this page, whether it's an H1, H2, H3, a toggle header, or just a normal header, all of these will pop up in a table of contents on the side. And when you click on it, it'll essentially highlight and go to it. Uh, this works best for long pages with things like blogs, where you can kind of scroll through the page or with pages that have great navigation capabilities. Like on this page, if I wanted to go to podcast ideas on the bottom of the page, quicker than scrolling for some people, mattering on the type of mouse you have, or you're just like habits in general. I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's cool, but if you do not like it, what you can do is click on table of contents and then it will actually remove it from the experience uh, to go back like it was normally. I don't like the UI UX positioning. I think you should be able to move your mouse a little bit more and then like get to the spot because it's weird because then you have to move your mouse back to the left to like kind of click. Interesting like UI UX positioning. I'm not going to say I would have done it better. I just don't like it that much. On some pages, I do turn it off because it's just a little bit cumbersome to deal with. Now, another really great one here, which is cool, is if we go to the three dots on this page, any database, you're going to see this. There's a new section where you'll notice that if I do show all features, all of these different items are here. So subtasks are going to be under this menu instead of its own side menu. Dependencies as well. Tasks, which you could then add to your Notion home. AI summary, which would essentially be, and this includes for the rest of these, adding a summarization of a page, translation of pages as well, and then AI keywords, which is like a multi-select for different properties that would automatically update. And custom AI autofill, uh, this would be for a property added to the system that it like summarizes what it's about for that page specifically. And then they also added their Google Drive integration to basically you see when I press added there, if I go inside this now, this is essentially a property for the Google Drive experience. This is their integration. It's not bad. If I click on this, I go to the Google Drive page that I clicked on, the file. I think it's okay. Obviously, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's better than having to copy and paste a link. However, it doesn't have API functionality. So for me, I'm just not going to get into that. But overall, it's cool that it kind of showcases to you the different options you have for sub items, dependencies, all that sort of stuff. And then also keeps your connection showcased right here, as well as your different automations. So it kind of condensed this because before it would have it all spread out. There would be like a sub items option if you are in a table view. And then for me, at least, I really enjoy the sub items option. So if I did turn on sub items, uh, this was like the only way that it would work before you'd have sub items under it, but you can change the view from nested. So it's like this item right here. That's like only stuff that's under and then having it cascade down. But you also have the option to change it as well to, and you'll notice by the way, when I added sub items, it took it out of the new section and added it just here. There's the option to have parents only. So then it would just showcase, for example, if it had any sub items, it would not have it show in the same way. It would show it had one dependency or I should say sub item right here. And then a flattened list 
would showcase that it is referencing like a, a higher item, but I really didn't like the fact that it was always like toggled out. I like the fact that this does indicate it's related to something else, but it doesn't kind of take away from the view functionality. And if you want a flat list, you can absolutely have that. So that was big for me. I didn't like the way that sub items had a different they worked, I had essentially ignored them and made my own relations. So for me, I think it's great. You also, if you click advanced items here, you can change the property to actually be a certain one. So for example, I use repurposed from and repurposed into, and it kind of is figuring that out. So I might end up trying out repurposed from and repurposed into as options for, you know, what is the main piece of content that would be the repurposed from and the repurposed into would be that sub item. Right, so I'm considering using that. However, it's gonna take me some time to check whether it works with the API setups that I have. I don't wanna break anything, but I do think it's a really great option so that you can view it in a way that makes more visual showcase, right? You saw those different ways that it visually showcased. Whereas for me, if I have a long form and a short form video, in here, I need to show an entirely different like property in order to see that. So really cool option i think that this improvement to the advanced settings here is great and can be used with stuff you've already set up because notion realizes people were doing this essentially before the feature came out it's like a ui ux improvement if you add that to the system but they're essentially a relation property so i think everything should work out for me i just have to test it out first a couple other things on the list that i want to talk about that i can't really get too deep into yet there have been a lot of leaks from notion hq i currently am under you know the pre-beta testing on a lot of different things. You have custom domains that you can add to your account to make websites, Notion. Obviously that's been added and I made a video on it last week, but they have showcased some other updates that are really cool. Like if I press Command F, there's actually a find and replace functionality now, which is crazy. I never thought I'd say this. So like start posting. I can actually change this to toggle replace. I would do Command Option F. I could do keep posting, right? And replace all. So I change this from start posting and then I could do keep posting. It does seem a little bit weird because I do see start posting is here. Yep, there we go, it worked. It doesn't seem to work for like properties, but it works for like text. So that's pretty cool. But the control F and like whole search and find and replace feature, definitely a find and replace is a huge upgrade from previously. This was kind of a soft rollout. They didn't really announce that this was different, but I'm so happy because I can't stand typing something and wanting to control F a bunch of, and, and like fix a bunch of different things, but having to type it out, replacing all is so much better. So kudos to them for that. It's gonna be making process docs and wiki updates that much easier. But some other updates that are gonna come are definitely gonna blow your mind too. There's the suggested edit option where essentially what you can do is in the product, you can leave suggested edits. It's trying to take after Google Docs to some regard, right? The ability to like leave comments on specific text, you know, we already had comments in Notion, but I do think that having a more advanced version of editing rather than it being just for the comments experience, what you're gonna see is that the suggested edits are kind of gonna be a little bit different. So if I go to, for example, some of my organic social posts that I was doing, like one of my ridiculous posts about how I should just work harder. What I could do here is rather than just leaving a comment like you're used to, you could do suggest edits, which puts you in suggesting mode. And I could instead write something like, I don't think you're working hard enough. Right. And what you'll notice here is it showcases a suggestion for me to edit it. And let's say I was having a back and forth with someone. I could either decline this or accept it. So if I rejected it, it wouldn't change the text. But if I get out of suggestion mode and I pretend I'm just the other person, watch this. I press accept. It replaces the text, right? Whatever you highlight and then right over, it's essentially going to give you an option to change the text. Whereas commenting, they might suggest that you do it like, you know, change it to if your career ain't going how you want, consider this. That's great comments at all, but what I would have to do is I'd have to go through and like actually write out and change it. So the suggestion makes it that much easier for it to just like happen. I mean, this this is 
what we call Google Docs getting its thunder stolen. And it's gonna be way better for me for all my social media posts like draft reviews with people on my team as well as clients reviewing my work and my team's work. And last but not least, something that I will call out that has been leaked. There's a lot of leaked stuff that's been coming out. There's gonna be Notion charts and there's gonna be dictation. There's gonna be insanely cool charts that are gonna be added to Notion. I don't wanna get too deep into it because I'm gonna make a whole video on it when it comes out but Notion Charts is finally here, finally coming. Yes, it has a lot of the things that you're hoping for. No, it's not perfect like any like new update, but Dictation, Charts, those are coming out too. So that's gonna be one of the new updates that I'll make in the future. If you like this video or have any questions about all the updates, please leave a comment down below. With that being said, I'll see you in the next one.